Imagine looking into the deepest part of the universe and realizing that the biggest monster out there might not be the one everyone talks about. What if Ton 618, the legendary giant we have treated as the final boss of black holes, is not actually the largest at all? And what if Phoenix A, the one often placed above everything else, is only the visible tip of an even stranger mystery. For a moment, allow yourself to question every list, every ranking and every headline you have ever seen about the biggest black hole. Because the truth hiding behind these two giants refuses to fit into anything simple or convenient. So who is truly the largest? The answer is far more unsettling than it appears. Are you ready to listen? To understand why these two giants are so different, you must look beyond their size and into the era when their light was born. Ton 618 shines from more than 18 billion light years away, carrying with it the echo of a universe that was still young and violently creative. It grew during an age when galaxies collided with little restraint and black holes consumed everything around them, turning the early cosmos into a furnace of raw formation. Phoenix A belongs to a much more mature universe. It sits at the core of the Phoenix Cluster, also known as SPT, CLJ 23444000, 243, one of the most powerful and crowded galaxy clusters ever observed. This environment does not create giants through chaos, but through conquest. Phoenix A became what it is by devouring entire galaxies inside the cluster, swallowing them one after another until a single colossal remnant remained. Shaped by the hunger of countless cosmic ages. When you place these two side by side, you are comparing more than mass. You are witnessing two epochs of the universe separated by unimaginable time. Their differences do not end at scale. They stand as symbols of two very different chapters in the evolution of the cosmos. When people argue about which black hole is larger, they often throw numbers around as if those numbers were carved in stone. But nothing about these giants is simple. The famous 66 billion solar masses of Ton 618 comes from a measurement tied to its quasar. We are not measuring the black hole directly. We are measuring the light of the gas swirling around it and then using models to infer what the central monster must weigh. A small change in the assumptions can shift the result by an enormous amount, which means the true mass of Ton 618 could be lower or even higher than anything published. Phoenix A appears even larger with estimates near 100 billion solar masses, yet that number depends on a completely different method. Astronomers measure the energy carved out in the surrounding plasma, which forms massive cavities, and from that, they derive how powerful the black hole must be. Critics argue that this method can exaggerate the result because the energy stored in those cavities is not always linked cleanly to the feeding behavior of the black hole. What we are really comparing is an inferred mass versus a derived mass, two numbers born from two very different kinds of uncertainty. And this is where the competition becomes a cosmic fog that refuses to clear. When people talk about the size of a black hole, they usually imagine a giant sphere swallowing everything around it. But the true size of a black hole is defined by its event horizon, the invisible boundary where not even light can escape. If you calculate this boundary for Ton 618 using the Schwarzschild solution, you end up with a radius so large it defies intuition. It stretches across distances comparable to entire star systems and forms a gravitational shadow that dwarfs almost every known object in the universe. 
Phoenix A is heavier on paper, but weight is not the only factor that shapes a horizon. Spin matters. Ton 618 is believed to rotate rapidly, which stretches the event horizon outward and makes it appear even larger. Phoenix A may have a slower rotation, which keeps its horizon more compact despite its enormous mass. The result is counterintuitive. One black hole may weigh more, yet appear smaller, while the other uses its spin to extend its reach far beyond what its mass alone would predict. One may be heavier, but not necessarily bigger. To compare the raw violence of these two giants, you need to look at how each one unleashes energy into its surroundings. Ton 618 is the definition of destructive brilliance. As a quasar, it shines with a luminosity so intense that it strips matter apart long before anything reaches the event horizon. Radiation pours from its accretion disk with a force that can sterilize entire regions of space, blowing away gas and dust as if the universe were being carved open by light itself. Phoenix A expresses its violence in a different way. It lies in the heart of a galaxy cluster where hot plasma fills the space between galaxies. When Phoenix A feeds, it launches titanic jets that punch through this plasma and inflate enormous cavities thousands of light years across. These cavities are silent scars carved into the cluster. Evidence of explosions so powerful that they reshape the environment on a galactic scale. One destroys with light. The other tears space with shockwaves. To understand which of these giants grows faster, you have to look at the rhythm of their feeding. Phoenix A lives in a mature universe. A place where matter does not fall freely, but collects slowly in the dense atmosphere of the Phoenix Cluster. Most of the time it rests in a quiet state. But when it awakens, the eruption is enormous. It releases a burst of feedback so powerful that it disrupts the cooling gas around it and briefly accelerates its growth before the environment forces it back into silence. Ton 618 grew under conditions that no longer exist. It lived in an era when the universe was still raw and overflowing with young galaxies rich in gas. Black holes of that time fed with a kind of reckless abundance because matter was everywhere and competition was constant. This allowed Ton 618 to undergo phases of rapid expansion that would be impossible today. Comparing these two is like comparing a sprinter to a sleeper who occasionally rises and shakes the ground. One grew fast because the cosmos was young. The other grows in violent intervals when its hunger finally breaks through the calm. If these two monsters competed in a race to consume, the outcome might surprise you. If there is one thing scientists rarely say out loud, it is how uncertain the measurements of supermassive black holes truly are. Phoenix A is calculated through the power of its cavities, those enormous voids carved into the plasma of the Phoenix Cluster. Astronomers estimate the energy required to blow these cavities open and then work backward to determine how strong the central black hole must be. But this method assumes that the jets created the cavities efficiently and that the energy was deposited in a predictable way. If the jets behaved differently, or if the environment absorbed energy unevenly, the final mass estimate could drift far from the truth. Ton 618 presents a different challenge. Its mass comes from spectroscopy, the study of how gas near the black hole emits light. Scientists measure the width of emission lines, then use theoretical models to infer the mass of the object generating the light. But this method depends on multiple assumptions. The distance must be correct. The geometry of the gas must match the model. The turbulence must behave in a way that theory expects. 
A small error in any one of these steps can send the calculation in a completely different direction. When you compare these two black holes, you are not comparing two solid numbers. You are comparing two guesses born from two different kinds of uncertainty. We may be judging two incorrect values created in two different ways. The most unsettling part of this story is that the largest black holes may be the ones we have never seen. TON 618 and Phoenix A are visible because they announce themselves with light and violence. Their surrounding gas glows. Their jets carve scars into space. But there may be monsters that remain completely silent. Astronomers call them dark giants, black holes that do not shine as quasars and do not reveal themselves through bright disks or dramatic eruptions. They sit in the corners of galaxy clusters or drift through cosmic voids with almost no material to feed on, without light to betray them. They become nearly impossible to detect. Some theoretical models even allow for black holes that reach masses of hundreds of billions or perhaps a trillion times the mass of our sun. These objects would not look impressive. They would look empty. A gravity well so deep that it absorbs everything around it while leaving nothing for our telescopes to capture. If TON 618 and Phoenix A are not the true champions of size, then the real ruler might be something we have never observed, something so quiet that the universe has hidden it in plain sight. If both TON 618 and Phoenix A are not the largest, then where is the one that reigns above them all? In the end, the competition between TON 618 and Phoenix A is not a contest of who is larger. It is a window into the history of the universe itself. TON 618 is a beacon from the past, a reminder of a young cosmos where creation was violent and abundance was everywhere. Phoenix A is the eruption of the present, a force shaped by maturity, where growth comes not from chaos, but from domination and long cycles of awakening. These two giants are more than candidates for the title of largest. They are questions wrapped in gravity. They challenge what we think we know about how black holes grow, how the universe evolves, and how much of the cosmic truth still hides beyond our reach. If size were the only thing that mattered, the story would end here. But the universe rarely offers simple endings. It whispers instead and invites us to look deeper. If this journey through the giants of the cosmos made you wonder what else might be hiding out there, consider staying with us. Your curiosity builds this channel and your support helps us uncover more of the universe one mystery at a time.